Great, Dr. Danny, what's up? Yes, today I come up with uh, fresh frozen plasma versus cryo precipitate. So mostly people are searching for it. So I thought, why not? We just discuss about the main highlighted point for USMLE. Right. You're talking about USMLE exam related. What will be the helpful information? You will have it from this uh, discussion, the A plus review. Excellent. Now we have fresh frozen plasma versus cryo cryo precipitate. So fresh frozen plasma contain all clotting factors. Versus cryo precipitate. Cryo means short. It's a concentrate concentrated form of insoluble precipitate. So what cryo precipitate will have? It has most of the important things we need to know it has factor 8 it has clotting factor 13 it has fibrinogen fibro no fibronectin fibronectin yes let me show sure. right. yes so Fresh frozen plasma has all the clotting factors, means most of it has everything. But the main goal is to know that for the exam purpose, what we need to know, these are the factors we need to know, which are 2, 7, 9, and 10, and protein. It's a reversing of those C and S related to. Warfarin, which is uh, warfarin actually gonna affect on these factors. So what we are talking about here is that what fresh frozen plasma and cryoprecipitate will do with our lab values. So it affects actually in the lab if those patient comes with all the clotting, uh, multiple clotting factor deficiencies. So the lab values you need to focus on, we know everything, most of it that INR level, PT, APTT, focus on uh, check for bleeding time. So if anything is screwed, it means they are giving you one of the disease and where you exactly fresh frozen plasma, normalize INR, PT, APT, APTT and bleeding time. And uh, you know what I'm actually talking about. So these are the lab values we are looking for. And once we start fresh frozen plasma, it's gonna reverse this uh, levels. So what's the abnormality? These levels will be increased in the case of extrinsic and uh, extrinsic pathways. Bleeding time will be there if there's a bleeding disorder increased. So now we will talk about the main indications. What are the main indications for fresh frozen plasma for the USML exam purpose? So as everybody knows, the indications for FFP right in, right, is DIC, not also cryoprecipitate. Only in the case if FPP doesn't work, then cryoprecipitate will help other than other factors. So DIC, we have TTP, us, they go hand in hand all this. Now the main thing is liver disease. These are the indication I'm writing for fresh frozen plasma first. Liver disease is major, all the multiple clotting factor deficiencies we are giving fresh frozen plasma. Now antithrombin 3, these are the high yield for the exam I'm writing. Antithrombin 3 deficiency. You guys have not this. Also, fresh frozen plasma is very useful in the immunodeficiencies. Deficiencies. And all multiple clotting factor deficiencies. Multiple clotting factors deficiencies. Now, the main goal is let's talk about fresh frozen plasma versus. 
prothrombin not not by pro thrombin complex concentrate which means pcc so now we will talk about the indication for pcc is for quick initially quick reversal of vitamin uh, sorry quick reversal of warfarin re re reversal warfarin toxicity so the patient is having warfarin and it's start having a side effect like bleeding and you have to reverse the warfarin level so you have to give pcc always choose pcc that's very fast and pcc will help in the reversal of warfarin warfarin because warfarin affects on 2, 7, 9, 10 so this is very high yield. PCC always choose PCC is the answer in the question if they describe and you have to reverse the, reverse the warfarin um, toxicity. So you have to give PCC. But only FPP will always be the wrong answer. But only in the case if uh, the, this alternative treatment like PCC does not work, then you have to choose FPP. Otherwise, PCC for warfarin reversal is always the right answer. Anything you want to add, uh, Dr. Hanna? Uh, very good so far. Um, like you said, prothrombin PCC uh, can be administered within minutes. Uh, that's why it is preferred and it contains all those uh, vitamin K related clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, protein CNS. Uh, the thing to know about fresh frozen plasma is it is so important and effective is because we can store it for up to one year. Cryoprecipitate which uh, some people might not know, is it inferior to fresh frozen plasma? Is it superior? Well, cryoprecipitate is actually taken from the fresh frozen plasma itself. So cryoprecipitate may be uh, even better, but what happens is once you thaw out the fresh frozen plasma and prepare the cryoprecipitate, you have to administer it within eight to 12 hours. So cryoprecipitate has that short lifespan, fresh frozen plasma, you can store it up to one year. And uh, PCC is acting in minutes. And uh, Dr. Danny said exactly right. If you see PCC on the exam, most likely that's the right answer. If it's PCC versus fresh frozen plasma, just make sure there's no trick. Otherwise, PCC is always gonna be the right answer. And why for the reversal? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Now we'll talk about the indication, so easy, just think about these factors and we'll go for the indications of cryoprecipitate. I'll write it here. Indications for cryoprecipitate. So the indication, we know that factor A deficiency, we have hemophilia. So hemophilia we give. Now for, uh, so sometimes you have uh, cryoprecipitate also called as anti-hemophilic factor. So let's remember that also. So we are giving factor A deficiency. We, we're giving cryoprecipitate for hemophilia A. Now the next thing is we have low fibrinogen, like in the case of DIC. So, Yes, our DIC will also help because you have a low fibrinogen, it's already used. So, a fibrinogen, genemia, like whatever, a fibrinogen. When the fibrinogen, fibrin, fibrinogen level goes less than 100 in the major surgery, any surgery patient is going through and Fibrinogen level drops less less than 100, you have to give cryoprecipitate because it has fibrinogen. So other than that, just uh, main thing is, I just uh, have to add here, I miss it. Von Willebrand factor? Yes, exactly. Von Willebrand factor. So it goes hand in hand. So, so we, of course, with that, we have to give in the Von Willebrand disease. Von Willebrand.
medication for cryoprecipitate because it has von Willebrand factor so give it in the case of von Willebrand disease Willebrand factor disease other than that i mean if your treating is acute onset you have to give desmopressin but this is the case when you have uh, to give cryoprecipitate so these are the indications where you give cryoprecipitate hemophilia dic fibrinogen emia or low fibrinogen level and it has von Willebrand factor given the von Willebrand factor disease so i guess we this is the main high yield points you need to know for the exam because they love to ask about dic ttp has liver disease and dysromine well, you should know this for sure other than that dr honda you want to add something um, for the most part, I think you've done a great job. Um, the thing between factor eight and von Willebrand factor, uh, sometimes people get confused. They are structurally uh, similar, but they are actually two different products. Von Willebrand serves a dual function. So it actually um, is the carrier for factor eight in plasma. And then the main role it does in hemostasis is that it promotes platelet adhesion um, as well as the platelet to platelet cohesion uh, yeah. during thrombus formation. So like Dr. Danny said perfectly that uh, factor eight would be respectively related to hemophilia A and von Willebrand factor to von Willebrand's disease. Yes, wonderful. So you guys can go through, write in, your, in the comments if you know extra stuff to for the USMLE purpose. So our main goal is to focus on what is the high yield content we need to